dynamic photoreflective hologram. Thank you for letting me launch it. Uh, I'm going to talk about the applications of the uh, photographic polymers uh, for dynamic holograms. The uh, materials are made by my colleagues at the University of uh, Arizona and the uh, Nisu Dengu um, uh, Technologies Inc. in uh, San Diego. So, this is the introduction of my work. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about the holograms uh, working at uh, 633 nanometer for dynamic correction of atmospheric like uh, wavefront apparitions. And then we are going to talk about the holograms working at the near infrared wavelengths for imaging new scattering medium. And finally, I will talk about the holograms with low decade time for imaging display. And basically, we are going to cover two new techniques we have developed recently. One is the laser thermal fixing of the hologram at the high TG materials using a CO2 laser. And the second technique is uh, we work on the low TG photographic polymers that uh, allows the long um, persistence time. So um, the basic uh, principle of photographic process is uh, uh, shown in this figure. So first we have two coherent beams. One is the reference beam, the other one is the object beam. So the interference of the two beams generates the interference pattern uh, with bright and darker irradiant uh, patterns. So because of the excitation of the free charges, uh, the interference pattern will re result in the non-uniform uh, free charge distribution. So in the higher irradiance region, uh, it will generate uh, more free charges, and in the low in radius region, the free charge, the density of the free charge will be uh, lower. So, because of the this uh, non-uniform distribution of the free charges, and the free charges were uh, shift and also uh, diffuse and also shift under the external fields. So, the diffusion or the drift of the mobile free charges and the finally they were trapped in the new locations. And this will result in free uh, space charge field. And there is a, a shift between the uh, space charge field and the original uh, intensity pattern. So because of the uh, redistribution of the uh, free charges, as a result, the uh, because of the electro optic effect of the um, photosensitive material, like uh, the chromophore in the photoreactive polymers, uh, it will result in the refractive index change uh, based on the nonlinear uh, optical effect. And that uh, um, refractive index change is proportional to the total space charge field and the external field for the photographic polymers. So the final refractive index change is uh, due to the combination of the space charge field and uh, the external applied field for the photographic polymers. And uh, the total uh, field will result in the, the phase shift in the index modulation. So there is a phase shift between the um, resulted index grating and the original intensity um, period structure. So this is the basic principle for photoreactive processing. And uh, basically there are three kinds of photoreactive materials. One is the photoreactive uh, crystals, which uh, were intensively studied in the 19 uh, 70s, 80s, and uh, 90s, and uh, um, Professor McNeil also covered the uh, photographic uh, holographic data storage, and that's uh, the 
many uh, the application of the photographic crystal and uh, uh, some photopolymers. So uh, my topic is uh, limited to the dynamic holograms. So there are many three kinds of materials that can be used as di photographic uh, dynamic holography materials. So photographic uh, inorganic crystals like lithium ligand. The second one is the organic polymers, which was uh, uh, invented in 1991. And uh, the photographic crystals was uh, the effect uh, was uh, um, I presume uh, around the 1970s at the Dell Labs. And the third uh, category of the photographic material is called the uh, uh, photographic semiconductors. Mainly, uh, it's a structure based on uh, the gallium uh, aluminum alkaloid. And, uh, and so, in the last uh, two decades, the photographic polymers were intensively uh, investigated. Many is the dynamic holography material. And uh, um, both the organic polymers and the semiconductor materials are thin film dynamic holography materials. And uh, the photographic crystals uh, can be bulky, like uh, can be very thick in the order of one centimeter thick. So it can be used uh, uh, for three dimensional data storage very efficiently. And the, Photographic polymers have some advantages in terms of the, uh, especially in wavelength tuning. Uh, as you may know that for photographic crystals, they are mainly sensitive in visible range. And for photographic uh, polymers, uh, they can be tuned for various wavelengths depending on the application. So today, yeah, I'm going to cover the photographic polymers that can work in both visible and uh, near infrared range. Uh, photographic polymers are gas host materials that have four components. Uh, it has a sanitizer, uh, which uh, absorbs the, the, the photons and it generates the free charges. And also the chromophore material, which uh, has a nonlinear optical effect uh, to uh, generated the uh, in-gas uh, grating. And then the plasticizer, uh, which is uh, used uh, to uh, reduce the, the TG temperature of the material, so that uh, we can, with the TG, we can make the materials that work in the room temperature. And then the uh, host polymer, all the other three compositions are mixed uh, with the host polymer. And the advantages of the photographic polymers are they are low cost and the ease of fabrication. And it takes only maybe about one to two hours to make the photographic polymers, but it takes uh, probably one to two days to make the photographic crystals. And uh, it can be designed for different wavelengths uh, based on the, the sanitizer we use in the photographic polymers. And, uh, uh, the other advantage of photographic polymers are high in-depth modulation. Uh, the refractive in-depth change of the photographic polymer gradient can be in the order of 10 to the minus uh, third order. Uh, for photographic crystals, uh, the refractive in-depth change can only be typically in the order of 10 to the minus fifth order. So uh, the refractive in-depth of photographic polymers are uh, two orders higher than the Refractive in depth change in photographic crystals. And it also uh, sensitive to low power lasers and has a large two beam company. And uh, the highest two beam company coefficient for photographic uh, polymers is uh, 400, uh, so which is uh, uh, a very high value. The uh, photographic polymers have, have been used for many applications in information processing and imaging. For example, in Imaging through two bit medium, uh, optical correlator, uh, which can be used in, in security and holographic data storage. And uh, today I'm going to cover the beam cleanup and the three dimensional uh, image display. So uh, this is a, a table showing the 
uh, recent uh, materials we have uh, applied for different uh, applications. So, uh, in a 600 series rheumometer, we developed the, the different devices uh, that allow to reduce the overall applied voltage to practical levels, maintaining 100% diffraction efficiency and a video rate response time. And we have demonstrated the beam cleanup applications for this kind of material. And we also developed the, the material working at a 532 nanometer that allows the persistence time longer than two hours. And uh, it can be used for holographic uh, dynamic display. So this is uh, a breakthrough uh, progress in photographic polymers. And you may know that uh, for photographic materials, the decay time is in the same order of the recording time, typically. So the recording time normally is in the order of 20 to 30 milliseconds. So typically, the decay time of the hologram is also in the order of 20 to 30 <coughs> milliseconds. So uh, in order to make the material for holographic display, we need to uh, make the hologram to be persistent for um, in the order of hours. So we developed the very special uh, techniques um, that allow the hologram to be persistent for in the order of hours. So we also uh, used the, the materials working at uh, the near infrared wavelengths, uh, for example, at a four, 845 nanometer and a one micro for application in imaging through scattering medium. And we, for both materials, we can achieve uh, near 100% diffraction efficiency and the video return is all time. And uh, we also used uh, the material working at uh, the communication with us. Uh, what, um, 1550 nanometer for correction of the aberration uh, in the communication wavelengths. So first I'm going to start with the material that's working at uh, 633 nanometer and uh, use it for dynamic correction of the atmospheric like aberrations in free space. So we use two materials uh, using the PHVG as the transporter matrix material. And uh, the sanitizer chromophore and the plasticizer are listed here. So uh, the chromophore is the DPDC, and the, the plasticizer is the ECZ, and the sanitizer is the C16, which is sensitive at uh, uh, 633 nanometer. And this is, is the second uh, uh, composition of the photographic polymers that work at uh, 633 nanometer. So the transport metric is the same, uh, PATBD. And uh, the uh, chromophore includes uh, uh, different uh, dyes, uh, 7 dash FDCST, APDC, and uh, RLC. And the plasticizer is uh, TPA dash CA2. The sanitizer is the same, which is the C60. And the both materials show very high optical performance. So this is the device uh, for all our photographic polymers. So the photographic polymers are sandwiched in between two ITU coated glasses. And we apply the voltages to the two ITU electrodes. And this is the structure for two beam, uh, four beam mixing. So uh, two beams from the right side uh, are used as uh, two recording beams. One is the reference beam, the other one is the uh, object beam. And then uh, if we use the reading beam that you counter propagating as a reference beam, then we get a diffraction beam that is counter propagating in the, in the object beam direction. And if we uh, just uh, um, use two beams for recording. And if we monitor the two diffracted beams, we can measure the two beam coupling uh, efficiency. So this is, we can make uh, both small devices and also large area devices using photographic polymers. So this one shows uh, a typical device uh, 
uh, with a diameter of a few millimeter. And this one shows a four inch by four inch large area uh, for wrapping polymer material. So for for wrapping crystals, it's hard to uh, make a for wrapping material that uh, as large as uh, a few centimeter by a few centimeter. Um, but for for wrapping polymer, we can do that. And, and um, and this uh, the large area material was made by little dangle technologies in in little dangle uh, in uh, San Diego, uh, California. So both materials shoot very very high uh, um, optical performance. So here we shoot the steady state diffraction efficiency as a function of the applied voltages. And you can see that uh, for the 105 micro photographic polymers at the six. Uh, KV, we can apply, uh, get an uh, external diffraction efficiency of 60%. And if we measure the internal diffraction efficiency, it can be 100%. And that, uh, the difference between the internal efficiency and the external efficiency is due to the absorption of the material itself. And the right side shows the response time of the material. And you can see that uh, we can achieve the response time less than 20 milliseconds. So it can be used for video data information processing applications. And this one shows the sensitivity of our, our material. And uh, as we expect, uh, with the increase of the irradiance of the lighting beams, the response time of the material can be reduced linear. Uh, so which means that uh, the, the speed of the material is linear proportional to the irradiance. Uh, the following few slides shows the basic concept for wavefront corruption. So, if we have an ideal plane wave, uh, which is distorted after the beam is experienced by the uh, distorted medium. So, this one shows the distorted wavefront. So, if we put a conventional mirror and let the beam reflect from the conventional mirror, when the beam is uh, uh, transmitted through this uh, distorted medium the second time, then the wavefront is doubly distorted if we use a conventional uh, reflection mirror. However, if we use a deformable mirror, which has a shape that uh, uh, is a, uh, have an opposite shape as the incident wavefront, then when after the reflected wavefront uh, transmitted through the distorted medium one more time, then the wavefront can be uh, corrupted perfectly. And we get a, a perfect plan uh, wave again with the adapter optics uh, device. And this is uh, the uh, schematic diagram for uh, adapter optics uh, loop. Uh, it has a wavefront corrupter and a, a wavefront sensor. So, uh, these devices are worked uh, together in a closed loop with the control unit by the computer. And the wavefront crafters and the wavefront uh, sensor are very expensive, so use the adaptive optics key are uh, very expensive to craft the uh, aberrations. So if we use uh, the photographic uh, holograph Thicker material, and then use the phase uh, conjugation concept, we can significantly reduce the, the, the cost for um, corrosion and distorted wavefront. So, the basic idea is uh, based on the four wave mixing concept, if we have a reference beam, and this is the input image, and it is the uh, Ideal Im image beam uh, is transmitted through the aberrator. So after the aberrator, the image is distorted. And in the holographic uh, material plan, the interference uh, happens between an ideal reference beam and the distorted Im image. So a distorted image is recorded in this holographic material. During the readout uh, procedure, if we use a reading beam that is counter-propagating as a reference beam, then 
uh, it will reconstruct the, the diffracted beam going in the opposite direction as the object beam. So when the object diffracted beam um, is transmitted through the aberrated beam at one more time, we get a corrupted image. So this is uh, based on the concept of four-wheel mixing uh, and the physical negation concept for correction of the distorted image. You know, we have successfully demonstrated this experiment uh, uh, using this setup. And this is a typical uh, 4F system or Fourier holography system. The uh, reference beam going to the photographic polymer is the idea of an wave. And this is the object. And uh, we put a Fourier transform lens in front of the photographic material, which means that the object is in the front focal plane of this uh, lens. And the material is in the back focal plane of this uh, transform lens. And then, in order to the, see the effect of the uh, corruption of the distorted image using the uh, four-wheel missing and the physical innovation concept, we use another lens and a CCD camera to detect the distorted image. And then we use a reading beam that is counter-propagating as a reference beam to read the hologram. And then the diffracted beam will follow the same trace as the object beam, but in the opposite direction. And when, if we put an aberrator here, the diffracted beam will be transmitted through the aberrator one more time. And uh, if we put a, a, another CCD here, we will get the corrected uh, image. So this is, is the, uh, the configuration for this uh, setup. And uh, we used uh, an aberrator that uh, uh, used uh, by the astronomy department uh, at the University of Arizona. And uh, we have successfully demonstrated the experiments on the left side, it shows the distorted image that uh, it is received by this detector. And uh, on the right side, it shows the image that is received by this detector. And you can see that uh, the image on the right side are uh, very well drafted. And this uh, shows the correction of the images from a resolution target with a uh, high uh, resolution. And the operator, we, as I said, we use the uh, um, from the astronomical department, uh, it's made of a distorted surface uh, um, and immersed by oil. So because of the refractive index mismatch between the glass and the oil, the optical pass length at each uh, location is different. So it causes, uh, uh, if uh, an incident beam is an ideal plane wave, after the plane wave is transmitted through this uh, aberrator, the field wavefront is distorted. And uh, we have done a lot of uh, uh, dynamic measurement in the system by moving this aberrator uh, in the direction perpendicular to the beam propagation, which means that uh, uh, in this optical setup, we, this is the aberrator, and we use the motorized transition stage to move the aberrator uh, in this direction, and the beam is propagating in this direction. So the aberrator is moving in a direction perpendicular to the beam direction. And we are able to corrupt the aberration in real time. So this also verifies the uh, video reproducible time of the material. So we also did the, uh, different experiments, like uh, for example, for the uh, uh, black line, we choose the different dynamic response of our material uh, when the aberrator is not moving. And uh, for the blue line, in the beginning, the aberrator is moving, so the diffraction efficiency is reduced. And then, if the aberrator stops moving, then the diffraction efficiency uh, goes back to the original value. And uh, for the green line, the aberrator is always moving, so the efficiency is reduced to this level. And uh, I can sh show you a movie to show the effect of the uh, 
dynamic crossing of the aberration. <coughs> this one shifts the, the, the original image without the distortion. Then this shows the, the clips for the distorted images. And then finally, it will show the corrupted images in real time. So uh, we did a lot of dynamic measurements in the system. And uh, initially, we um, applied a 6 kV voltage. And we measured the diffraction efficiency um, as a function of the speed of the aberrator. As you can see, that uh, when the aberrator moves faster, the diffraction signal um, is smaller. You know. And uh, also, if we reduce the voltage uh, to 5 kb from 6 kb, uh, we, we did the same experiment and uh, uh, we can see the same uh, phenomena, like with the increase of the speed of the aberrator, the diffraction efficiency is also uh, reduced. And uh, we reduced the temp uh, external voltage from 6 kb to 3 kb. And we were able to successfully correct the uh, aberration in the same way. So here are the data uh, for the dynamic response of the system in the three k And uh, here we show that uh, uh, if we fix the voltage and uh, increase the object beam intensity, the diffraction signal can be increased correspondingly. And uh, this one shows the dynamic response in the system at various voltages. And it shows that uh, with the increase of the voltages, the diffraction signal uh, is increased. And uh, in many real-time uh, signal processing, we don't need to uh, have 100% diffraction efficiency. So as long as the, the detector can detect the signal with a reasonable signal-to-noise ratio, then it should be good enough for the uh, uh, real applications. So in order to reduce the uh, practical voltages, we um, tried this uh, 105 micron sample at the 3 kV, and we will be able to do the same experiment uh, at the 3 kV voltages. And uh, I'm not going to show the, the movie. It's, uh, the result is very similar to the movie I just showed you. And it, based on the nonlinear effect of the photographic hologram, we can also use it uh, for edge detection. <coughs> and uh, in order to further reduce the uh, applied voltage for the photographic materials, we tried to uh, make a similar photographic polymers. So uh, for photographic, photographic materials, the diffraction efficiency uh, is a size square function of the delta A and uh, the thickness. So, and there is a parameter called a Q factor, which is used to define a volume hologram or a thin hologram. So, if this parameter is uh, much larger than one, typically you know, we use a 10 uh, as a criteria. So, if this Q factor is uh, close or larger than 10, we consider the holographic material is a volume holographic material. So when we try to reduce the um, applied uh, practical voltages, we still want to keep the hologram uh, in the volume hologram um, category. So we made the hologram with different thickness from uh, reducing the thickness from 105 micron to 53 micron and also to 37 micron and 20 micron. 
as you can see that uh, uh, with a reduced uh, thickness, uh, we can still see very good uh, diffraction efficiencies. Uh, this is the comparison for 53 micro sample and a 20 micro sample. As you can see that the diffraction efficiency is reduced when the thin film thickness is reduced. But uh, uh, we can still get a very good uh, diffraction signals based on our experimental uh, results. This one shows the, the steady state diffraction efficiency for 53 micro sample and 20 micro sample. And uh, this, in this table, you can see that uh, for 53 micro sample, we can still get a 74 diffraction efficiency. Uh, this is the uh, internal diffraction efficiency. And for 20 micro sample, with the 1.2 kV volt, we can still get a 35 diffraction efficiency. And these diffraction efficiencies are good enough for many practical applications in signal processing. So, uh, in order to further reduce the working voltage, we also, um, my colleagues also developed a new photographic um, materials that allow the uh, low uh, modulation voltage. So this is the combination uh, that allows the low voltage uh, operation. So with this 10, 20 micro sample, we are able to do this uh, uh, operation correction experiment at 800 kV, uh, 800 volt. And this is the, a second uh, combination that allows low voltage operation. And with this combination, uh, at the 20 micro uh, sample seconds, we are able to do the dynamic operation correction at 600 to 700 volt. And we also did the dynamic uh, uh, experiment uh, uh, with this uh, 20 micron thick sample. So at uh, the voltage of 700 uh, uh, volt, as you can see that uh, when the operator is moving at 3.3 millimeter per second, uh, uh, we can also repeat uh, the previous experiment and uh, get a very good uh, uh, signals. And this one shows uh, at a 700 volt um, at a different uh, speed of the operator. Uh, we can see uh, still detect the very good uh, uh, diffraction signals. And this one shows the diffraction signal uh, can be increased with the increase of the irradiance of the object beam. And, and this shows the result for the material working at 633 nanometer. <coughs> and uh, we also worked on the dynamic operation correction at the, the telecommunication wavelength, 1550 nanometer. The 1550 nanometer material is based on the two photon uh, absorption. So we need to use the ultra fast laser. And uh, uh, based on the, the material has sensitivity uh, at a 700, uh, 75 nanometer with one photon. So that means that uh, the material will have a good response at uh, 1550 nanometer based on the two photon uh, effect. So this is the combination for the two photon uh, response material. And uh, this is, is the transport matrix material is the same, PATD as before. And this is, is a common form. The EC is, the, is also the uh, plasticizer. And uh, this is the sensitizer, TBM. And this is, figure shows the steady state diffraction efficiency of the material working at 1550 nanometer. So at uh, uh, 6 kV voltage, we can get a 40% diffraction efficiency. And also the response time can be uh, in the video rate range, uh, 35 milliseconds. And uh, we use the same uh, setup, we are able to correct the aberrations um, uh, dynamically. And uh, this figure shows the result of our dynamic aberration correction. So on the left side, it shows the, the original uh, image without the uh, 
operator. And this one shows the distorted uh, image. And this one shows uh, the corrupted image. So this is a, a summary for this part. And uh, so we have demonstrated the dynamic correction of the phase distortion using the operator, which has atmospheric distortion. So for 105 microsecond sample, high quality movies can be obtained at 3 kV when the operator is moving at 0.3 millimeter per second. And the various dynamic responses have been investigated. And the properties of the material in the system have been studied, for example, the speed and the diffraction signal as a function of the object intensity, diffraction signal as a function of the applied field. And then the working voltage can be reduced by reducing the thickness of the samples, and it can be further reduced using thin samples with lower overmodulation voltage. And for 20 micron thick sample, high quality movies can be obtained at 700 volt when the operation is, the operator is moved at 0.3 millimeter per second. And uh, various dynamics have been studied. So this is a summary for uh, this part. Um, do you have any questions? No. Maybe we, we yeah, uh, stop here and then <coughs> Uh, yeah, we